It was called island hopping, the U.S. military strategy for denying Chinese freedom to operate in the South China Sea. The idea was simple enough. You landed a company-sized force of Marines on a random rock in the ocean, kicking out whoever was there, and then turned it into a porcupine, bristling with anti-air and anti-ship missiles. It wouldn't be a rerun of World War II, where Japanese troops were dug in like ticks on big islands like Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima, and casualties on both sides were in the tens of thousands, because the average atoll or reef in the South China Sea was tiny, garrisoned by only a few hundred Chinese troops and patrolled by Chinese Coast Guard vessels that had never faced anything more threatening than angry Philippine or Vietnamese fishermen. Pound it flat with sub-launched cruise missiles, secure air superiority, and then send in the Marines straight off the dock of an amphibious assault ship a couple hundred miles away, at night, in a surprise attack, right? Oorah! Hospital Corpsman First Class Calvin Bell had never liked the idea, and he had a dozen reasons why. Top of the list? How surprised was an enemy supposed to be after a couple of hours of being pounded by cruise missiles? They were supposed to crawl out of the rubble of their bunkers and look up at the sky and go, Oh well, glad that's over. Wonder what's for breakfast? Hell no. They'd be piling the rubble into walls and setting up firing positions is what they'd be doing because... Second on the list, cruise missiles might be good for blowing up buildings, trucks, tents, and fuel dumps, but they absolutely sucked at killing dug-in troops. A tour in Syria under fire from Russian-made Syrian mortars and thermal barrack rockets every day for six months had taught him that. The average grunt has an inconvenient tendency to dig themselves deep into the dirt as soon as the world around them starts exploding, and dirt is great cover from cruise missiles unless one lands right next to you. And third, every island-hopping exercise Bell had ever been on in the last few years, every little fake Pacific island they'd assaulted, the exercise briefing had always started with, a beachhead has been established at the objective. Your mission is to... And after a couple of these exercises, Bell finally raised his hand. Uh, Major? or captain or lieutenant. What if the beachhead hasn't been established? Do we just turn around and fly home? But he'd already known the answer to that one. So he carefully went through every pocket on his uniform, again, for the tenth time. Night vision goggles, gloves, individual first aid kit, six combat application tourniquets, field dressings, two larger abdominal field dressings, Two more tourniquets, hemostatic clotting agent for catastrophic wounds, medical shears, hunting knife, M18 9mm pistol, and ammo.